With this Blues Riffs for Beginners guitar lesson, we'll take another step closer to being able to solo and improvise by showing you how to play passing tones and double stop riffs, along with guitar tabs and practice backing rhythm tracks. We'll cover it all with the step-by-step -step approach. Now all the new riffs we'll introduce in this lesson are going to be from the key of A blues along the 5th fret position. So it's a good idea if you already have some blues basics down, most notably the a pentatonic minor box pattern, also known as the blues box pattern. And we've covered that in previous lessons, but a quick review of the box pattern. And a lot of people learn this as their first step with blues soloing, so uh, if you don't have this pattern down, I do have a blues guitar lessons playlist. You can go back and review that. Uh, that'll be a great foundation because if you know the box pattern, you can visualize how all the riffs we're going to cover fit into the box pattern. So uh, if you've got that box pattern down, we're ready now to start working on passing tones riffs. Now passing tones can generally be considered as notes that are outside of a particular scale, but you intentionally add or throw them into a guitar riff or a solo to achieve a certain mood or tone. And when it comes to blues soloing, you add passing tones to the pentatonic minor scale. And the mood you get, um, I would consider it sort of a stutter step-like effect when you add passing tones to a blues or rock riff. Um, I'll give you some examples of some famous riffs with passing tones. Uh, when it comes to blues and rock, maybe the most famous one, Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. Passing tone. Um, Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Do, dun, dun, dun. That again, that second middle finger note. Do, dun, 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 dun. That's a passing tone as well. Um, another one, a famous one, Wipeout by the Safaris. That uh, again, the second middle finger note. That note. And again, it's sort of, as opposed to just, instead of just playing normal pentatonic minor scale, again, you throw in the passing tone, it sort of slows things up a little bit, hence the, uh, what I call the stutter step effect. But let's get into some passing tones riffs, and again, we're going to introduce these riffs all in A, A blues, along the fifth fret position. So if we took the standard pentatonic minor box pattern, uh, where you can add passing tones would be on the at least with this particular box pattern, it'll be on the 5th, 4th, and 3rd strings. And if you're looking at the uh, diagram on the screen, uh, the P inside the circle indicates passing tone. So let's start by playing the box pattern and throwing in those passing tones. So we start on that bottom string and then it's simply 5, 6, 7 on three consecutive strings. So let's start that again and we'll now do the complete run. And then starting on that root note for a descending riff. Now that we know where the passing tones are in the A blues box pattern, let's learn some A blues riffs with passing tones. So Starting with riff number one, uh, we're going to start, again, we're in that same box pattern, but now we're going to start on the fifth string, fifth fret. And with this riff, we're going to just play the strings, at least to start, that have the passing tone. So the riff starts like this, five, six, seven, then next string, five, six, seven, then next string, five, six, seven. And you, once you know it, you can count it. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Put a little sustain on that note, and then we're going to do the same thing, descending down the strings. So back to the beginning. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we continue to go down the box pattern. But instead of ending on the root note, which does sound pretty good, we're going to throw in a little variation here. Just to make things a little more challenging for you, we're going to do this. We're going 
and still on an A root note, but we're going to play the A note on the uh, the A root note on the fourth string, and we're going to slide up to it. So a little variation there, but it makes for a cooler sounding riff. Here is how riff number one with the passing tones will sound. And let's do that one more time. One more passing tones riff in this clip. It'll be riff number two. And uh, we're going to play this one. Uh, we're going to start now on the fourth string. Another five, seven, five, six, seven deal with the passing tone, but this time we're going to do a double hammer. So we pluck that fourth string fifth fret, but the other notes are sounded by the double hammer. And then the first finger is sort of flattened, partially barred on the middle two strings, it's going to catch that third string fifth fret for the next note. Dun, 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 dun. And then back down that third finger, fourth string seventh fret, which is the root note. Dun, dun, dun. Then that third finger shifts down to the fifth string, and we're going to do this. Another passing tone thrown in there. So. The complete riff. And we'll do that one more time. And what's coming up is we're going to practice these riffs along with a backing blues rhythm track so you can hear how they harmonize with rhythm. Uh, but before we do that, um, we should maybe rehearse combining the two riffs. So here we go back to riff number one. And then riff number two, staying on that same string but going down the first finger. going to do next, we're going to play them along with the backing rhythm. And on this next clip, we're actually going to play the combined riff we just did twice. And not only that, but while the rhythm's playing, um, they'll also be, um, I'll be playing a guide solo. So uh, that way you don't play too fast or too slow. So the objective of the next clip is just to see if you can keep up uh, with the guide solo. Uh, and that'll help develop a sense of timing or syncing up uh, soloing with playing with the backing rhythm. Double stops is just a fancy name for playing two strings together at the same time. And when it comes to blues and rock, probably the most famous example, uh, Chuck Berry, Johnny Be Good. And so a couple of examples of double stops on the higher strings and lower strings there. Uh, for this beginner's lesson, we're going to do some basic double stops, but down the road, this could lead to you playing Johnny Be Good. And Again, we're going to go to A blues. Johnny B. Good was in a different key. We're going to shift now back to A blues box pattern. And uh, the first double stop riff we're going to do uh, involves uh, starting with the bend on that third string uh, seventh fret. Again, when, with bending, as we uh, mentioned in previous lessons, you want multiple fingers so you got better control and tone. And then what we're going to do 
is again within that A blues box pattern we're going to flatten our first finger on the top two strings along the fifth fret so with that bend uh, you can definitely get two fingers uh, the first fingers probably got to be in position to catch those double stops but here's how we're going to start it strong bend and then the first finger so it's kind of you're going to count it in threes the one will be the bend one two three we're going to play this a total of three times. If you notice, uh, when we repeat it, it's kind of like you keep that first finger anchored and those two fingers, you want to keep them steady in position. And we're going to add a little bit more to this riff. So that's going to be a bend and release on the third string. And then and then we're going to play that fifth fret on the third string by itself after the release and then dun, dun, going down to the fourth string five seven maybe throw a little vibrato as we end on that A root note so let's put together uh, riff one with the double stops do that one again. And then we're going to throw in another double stop riff. This will be riff number two for the double stops. This one uh, we're going to just flatten our first finger again along those top two strings. And this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So going down to the fourth fret, sliding on the one count, one, two, three, then two more of those. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to descend down the pentatonic minor box pattern. So putting that all together will make up riff number two, and here's how it'll sound. time. And like we did with the passing tones, we'll uh, work these uh, double stop riffs out with a backing track again in a blues. Uh, but before we do that, uh, maybe we'll connect the two uh, just to get used to doing that. So uh, going back to the first double stop riff, number two. So that connected riff, riff number one and riff number two, uh, in the next clip uh, we'll play that connected riff two times. Again, there'll be a guide track with me playing along, so try not to play ahead or behind because while you're copying the riffs we're also working on timing them uh, without going into too much detail, but if you can uh, keep up with the uh, guide track, that's the objective uh, with the next clip. One of the first major steps in being able to solo and improvise is to start taking standard or classic riffs you already know and mixing and matching the riffs in different running orders and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to uh, start combining uh, the passing tones riffs with the double stop riffs and we're going to rearrange the running order a bit. So uh, and it's always a good idea to sort of map things out beforehand rather than just jumping into the uh, backing track. So 
the running order we're going to apply uh, with the next backing rhythm, uh, we're going to start with uh, the first double stops riff. And then we'll follow it with the first passing tones riff. Then we'll do the other double stops riff. And then we'll end with the second passing tones riff. And this is a great challenge. Once you can do the uh, what we did initially, if you can follow those riffs, uh, then we get you acclimated to again mixing and matching them. It might throw you off a little bit at first, but again, it's the first step in being creative uh, down the road when you start mixing and matching riffs how you want to do that. So uh, next clip, again, will be an A, and there will be a guide track as well. And see if you can keep up and follow along with that. All the riffs we just covered are movable. In other words, they can be played up or down along the fretboard in different keys. So the next challenge is we're going to play uh, another combination of riffs, but this time in the key of G blues, which will be along the third fret position. And again, we're going to change up the running order. Um, this time we're going to start uh, with the uh, second double stop riff. And then we'll follow it up with uh, combining the two passing tones riffs. And then we'll end with the initial double stops riff. Next we'll take some riffs from previous lessons and combine those with the new passing tone and double stop riffs. We're going to focus on two of those riffs and we'll review both of them in the key of A. Uh, the first riff was the blues riff. And the second riff was the bend and release riff. Now, if we throw these riffs into the mix, uh, that gives, a, along with the four new riffs that we just introduced, that, that presents a lot of different combinations that we can try out. So uh, we're going to start again with a prearranged running order of riffs. And we're also going to shift to yet another key. Uh, we're going to take everything and move up to the ninth fret, to D flat blues. And uh, the running order, it's going to be a longer running order because it's going to be a longer rhythm track. It'll be two verses, two 12-bar progressions. So we have a longer running order, longer list here. And we're going to start with the blues riff. And then follow that with passing tones riff number two. 
then we'll just descend up the box pattern, the pentatonic minor box pattern. And then double stop riff number two. And then we'll end verse one with the bend and release riff. Verse 2 will begin with passing tones riff number 1. And then uh, we'll do a descending uh, riff. We'll play the box pattern in descending order, starting at the top string. end verse 2 with uh, the uh, double stop riff number 1. And so we're going to apply all of that uh, with the next track again D flat blues and we'll play the same running order and just see if you can keep up with the guide solo track. Now by this point in the lesson you've got a pretty good foundation when it comes to combining these new uh, passing tone and double stop riffs together. So what we're going to do in the next clip, uh, there will be no guide solo track. Uh, that will enable you to uh, make your own combinations and try out different ones and uh, see how they sound with a backing rhythm. Uh, with just the riffs alone, uh, two passing tone riffs, two double stop riffs, also the two classic riffs we did in the previous clip. Uh, that's six uh, riffs and all the various combinations you can do with six riffs, that would be six factorial, 720 potential combinations. And to even add to that, uh, just going up and down the basic box pattern, going up and down two more, that would be eight factorial. That's about 40,000 potential combinations uh, that you can try out with the next clip. So uh, hopefully that's enough to keep you busy. Again, the next clip will be in the same key that we did previously, D-flat blues.